It was a sunny summer's day and I was about 12 years old when I went on a hike with my grandmother. Everything around me felt vibrant and alive and as we left her village behind, I started to slow down because I saw something that was both beautiful and strange to me. On my left side, there was this meadow full of wildflowers and I had never seen so many in my entire life. Pink, orange, blue, you name it. The scent, fresh and wild, is still on my nose today. In my childish curiosity, I turned to my grandmother and asked her, hey, so why are there so many wildflowers here? Can you explain me? With a warm smile that grandmothers do best, she turned to me and said, yeah, sure. First, she pointed to the forest, to the trees, and said, look, the trees are providing shade. And also, there's pollen, the pollen of the flowers flowing in from the forest. Then she pointed to the last house of the village and said, here's where the pollen stop, so they can't go any further. So they all land in this meadow. And this is why there are so many beautiful wildflowers here. Years later, I realized how much of a life lesson this was. Because now I know that in between two or more different systems, there is always the potential for something beautiful, for something new to emerge. And this is because we can't understand life without acknowledging the fundamental interrelatedness of everything. This is nothing new. Indigenous ancient cultures have been living aligned with the land and with other species for thousands of years. But what is new is that today we are in a massive global crisis. What is new is that our survival and that of many other species is endangered. You might have your own images flashing up in front of your eyes right now, the wildfires of this summer, the conflicts. We have all these intractable, wicked problems in the world. But looking at how breakthroughs, how change happens, it is exactly the same way like with the wildflowers, because it is in between us, it is in our relationships that we gain the power to transform ourselves and our societies. And this is why today I want to introduce you to the practice of weaving. Weaving the fabric of our communities and our societies. I'm a weaver now for many years, and when I heur first heard about this idea, I was struck because I was always trying to connect people, bringing people together to work towards a shared purpose. Weaving is a new form of leadership that doesn't rely on this one person who is the hero at, at the top of the hierarchy, but weaving, we're trying to decentralize power. We're trying to work collaboratively to create bigger changes in our societies. There are many examples and stories of this, and I want to share one from my friend Catalina. She's working in Colombia. And in Colombia, there is a persistent problem of youth violence. So people from a very young age are entering into gangs and descending into a vicious cycle of violence, which is incredibly heartbreaking. It has a big effect on them and their families and the safety of their cities, and it is a very deeply ingrained problem. Now, 10 years ago, Catalina, who was moved by this issue, said, okay, we need to do something about this, but we can't do it just alone. So she brought together people from very different areas of society, from different sectors. There were people from the schools, 
people from the government, people even from the military, and of course, the young people themselves. They came together in a room, and they realized they all had a stake in this issue. They all had their own perspectives and agendas, but they all had a stake in this issue of youth violence. Eventually, through many, many conversations, they started to create a shared purpose. And this shared purpose was to create a culture of peace throughout the whole country. And to realize this purpose, they had to work together. So they overcame many roadblocks and many conflicts because you can imagine a government, person from the government is thinking differently than a young person. We have different kinds of knowledge and different life experiences. So we, they had to meet and learn how to trust each other and how to collaborate for the larger goal that they had set themselves. Now, what this story from Colombia speaks to is, is that change is possible. Over the last 10 years, they have collectively reached 2 million young people. I'm always so inspired when I hear this number. They reached 2 million young people, and these young people are now active peace builders and really stepping, stepping up for this culture of peace. What I learned from this story and many others from across the globe is that there are few ingredients that are crucial when we want to collaborate, when we want to weave our ideas to create healing, well-being, and change. Fundamental one is to restore a sense of trust. We live in a world that is full of conflict and trauma, and it requires a lot of healing and deep listening to each other to create a sense of trust. As a weaver, I therefore always try to listen. I try to be humble. I try to be curious and learn about the life experiences of others. Then, when we establish relationships, we can start to align to this bigger purpose a goal that excites all of us and that creates more well-being in the world. And this depends, you know, on your own context and your own purpose, what this is as well. And then there's also some very practical elements to it, you know. It doesn't happen just through idealism and just through the relationships, but we also need to generate resources together and align our strategies to really make a difference on these larger systems and institutions. Yes, the dominant systems of today are based on separation. Separation from ourselves, separation from each other, and separation from the wider web of life. And this has led us into an incredibly big crisis that we're facing today. But instead of giving up, and trust me, <laughs> I have some days where I want to give up and where I just feel overwhelmed by grief and anger and paralysis about what is happening in our world. But we can't stay here. We can move into a place of hope, into a place of possibility, into a place where we can weave our dreams together, our talents, our gifts to affect larger systemic changes. Our times right now are calling us to step up. The process that is at play right now is much deeper than just the climate crisis or the social unrest. Something old is dying, and we are called to create the new. We are called to create a new way of being on this earth, which is more in balance which is more aligned with the planet and with ourselves. And weaving for that is essential. Because just like the meadow in the story of my grandmother, in between us, in between here, everybody in this room, there is the possibility for something beautiful, for something colorful, for something new to emerge. 
And it is my, my prayer and my hope that we can come together to address the crisis of today with creativity, compassion, and love. Thank you. <laughs>